At the Crosby Group, our commitments to superior engineering, exceptional performance, and uncompromising quality combine to produce overhead lifting products unrivaled in the industry. And wire lock socketing compound is no exception. Wire lock is a polyester based resin system developed for socketing wire rope. When properly used, spelter sockets terminated with wire lock have an efficiency rating of 100% based on the catalog strength of the wire rope. The ratings are based on recommended use with XIP, double XIP, fiber core, or IWRC wire rope and structural strand. Over the next few minutes, we'll explain the features and benefits that will be achieved when choosing wire lock over other socketing materials. But first, it's important to remember that socketing is a skilled operation that must be performed by qualified personnel and carried out according to ISO standard 7595 and TR 7596 and the Wire Rope User's Manual, published by the Wire Rope Technical Board. It is equally important to read and understand the information outlined in the Wire Lock Technical Data Manual and follow the step-by-step -step instructions. The proper steps required to pour wire lock are also shown in the product warning brochure as well as on the application instructions accompanying each kit. And please keep in mind that while this video may prove helpful in training personnel in the use of wire lock, it should only be used in conjunction with the printed materials available from Crosby, including the technical data manual, the product warning brochure, and the application instructions. Now let's take a look at the features that make wire lock the most versatile socketing compound available. First, wire lock is available in five pre-measured kit sizes, 100cc, 250cc, 500cc, 1000cc, and 2000cc. Additional kit sizes are also available on a per order basis. Socketing with wire lock should be carried out when the ambient temperature is within the range of 27 degrees Fahrenheit to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. At the lower end of the range, booster packs should be used to maintain proper gel time. We'll discuss booster packs in greater detail in a few minutes. When poured at a temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit, wire lock is designed to gel in approximately 15 minutes and should reach full strength one hour after gelling. And with wire lock, an improved fatigue life of the assembly is achieved. Wire lock is designed for use in a wide range of operating temperatures, from plus 240 degrees to minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, wire lock terminations are not affected by oils, grease, or salt water. And wire lock is 80% lighter than zinc. Sockets previously filled with wire lock can be reused when proper procedures are followed. And wire lock has an improved shelf life of 18 months from the date of manufacture. The expiration date of the product is printed on each container of the kit. Wire lock should not be used after the expiration date. Each wire lock kit also has a batch number. Like the PIC found on other Crosby products, the batch number allows for material traceability. In addition, each wire lock kit is shipped with MSDS sheets. Finally, wire lock is manufactured by an ISO 9002 approved company, affording the benefits of identification, traceability, and quality assurance. To assure the 100% efficiency of wire lock, the step-by-step -step application procedure must be adhered to. As with any socketing termination, the selection of the socket and proper preparation of the wire rope are critical steps in achieving the full benefits of wire lock. Socket choice should comply with federal or international standards, such as CEN or ISO. Wire lock is recommended for use with Crosby 416 and 417 spelter sockets, both of which meet the U.S. federal standard. When using sockets other than Crosby 416 or 417 styles, consult the socket manufacturer or Crosby Engineering. As with all socketing media, wire lock depends upon the wedging action of the cone within the socket basket to develop full efficiency. Because resin shrinks upon curing, seating of the cone will occur under load. This is necessary to develop the wedging action. 
After socket selection, the wire rope or strand should be seized with a single soft annealed iron wire. Next, the wire rope must be properly broomed. Brooming is the most critical part of the socketing process. More than two-thirds of the available wedging forces are concentrated in the bottom one-third of the socket. Therefore, it's extremely important that the resin has sufficient space around each of the wires in this critical area to make maximum use of the available surface area of the wires, thus achieving equal transmission of the compressive forces on each wire. This will result in the most efficient wedging action of every wire in the broom. Begin the brooming by unlaying and bending back the strands of wire rope as far down as the seizing, taking care not to bend the strands back too far. The maximum included angle should be 60 degrees. Remove any fiber core. Then unlay the individual wires from each strand, including the IWRC, completely down to the seizing. Please note that with ropes three inches in diameter and larger, the gaps between the unlaid strands and the fiber core should be plugged with very small pieces of clay to prevent internal leakage. Then, remove any fiber core and unlay the individual wires from each strand, including the IWRC, completely down to the seizing. Next, the broom should be thoroughly cleaned. The method of cleaning will depend on the lubricant and or coating on the wire. Consult the Wire Rope Technical Board, your Wire Rope Supplier, or the Wire Rope Manufacturer for recommended methods of cleaning. However, the materials used for cleaning should comply with current EPA regulations. Once the wire rope has been cleaned and dried, the broom should be inserted inside the socket, making certain that the wires are uniformly spaced within the basket and the wire ends are at the top of the basket. The final step in the preparation is to seal the base of the socket with a plasticine or clay putty. This will prevent leakage of wire lock during pouring, thus eliminating the potential of voids in the critical lower portion of the basket. For sockets one half inch and smaller, a small vent hole in the putty will allow the air to escape from the bottom of the cone. Once wire lock leaks from the hole, it should be closed. Before we begin pouring the socket, Let's take a look at the advantages that WireLock offers the user. WireLock kits only need mixing. The kits are pre-measured and consist of only two components, the resin and a granular compound. It's important to keep in mind that you must never mix less than the total contents of the kit. Crosby makes it easy to determine the amount of WireLock required for each pour. A chart can be found in our WireLock technical data manual as well as the Crosby General Catalog showing the predetermined amounts needed. Simply locate the size of the socket you're using and the amount of wire lock required is at your fingertips. To mix the wire lock, simply pour all of the resin and all of the granular compound into a container and mix thoroughly for two minutes with a flat paddle. If a container other than the wire lock can is used for mixing, make sure it is clean and made from only metal polyethylene, or polypropylene. Except for our 1,000cc size kit, all other Crosby wire lock kits can utilize the container holding the granular powder for mixing and pouring the compound. The 1,000cc size kit will require a separate container for mixing. And remember, when using wire lock, the total contents of both containers must always be mixed together, even if the full amount will not be needed and never use kits whose use-by dates have expired. As we've already indicated, WireLock is designed to be poured within the ambient temperature range of 48 degrees Fahrenheit to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. At ambient temperatures between 27 degrees Fahrenheit and 48 degrees Fahrenheit, it will be necessary to use booster packs. Booster packs compensate chemically for the slower gel time experienced at lower temperatures. For temperatures between 35 degrees and 48 degrees Fahrenheit, one booster pack should be used. For temperatures between 27 degrees and 35 degrees Fahrenheit, two booster packs should be used. The size of the booster pack is based on the size of the wire lock kit being poured. The information on booster pack size can be found in our general catalog. It is important to add the complete booster pack to the granular material in the kit before adding the resin. 
and always mix the full ingredients of the kit together. In order to comply with all approvals granted, Wirelock should not be poured at temperatures below 27 degrees Fahrenheit. However, once Wirelock is in its cured state, it is not adversely affected by cold temperatures. Immediately after mixing, pour the Wirelock mixture slowly and continuously down one side of the socket until the basket is full. With Wirelock, a one-time pour is preferred. Compared to zinc, Wirelock offers several major advantages. First, there is no heat and no burns or long-term heavy metal exposure for the operator. With wire lock, the poured socket can be put into use quickly. At 65 degrees Fahrenheit, the wire lock will gel in approximately 15 minutes and cure within 60 minutes after gel. The ease with which wire lock can be stored, mixed and poured makes it ideal for socketing wire rope. Wirelock has received approval from agencies around the world, including Lloyd's Register of Shipping, Det Norske Veritas, the United States Coast Guard, Registro Italiano Navale, and Germanischer Lloyd. Finally, we provide through the Wirelock Technical Data Manual complete documentation on Wirelock. This booklet includes the product warning, applications for proper use of Wirelock, general information on Wirelock, properties of wire lock, and the material safety data sheets. Wire lock socketing compound. Another reason to say, when buying Crosby, you're buying more than product, you're buying quality. For additional information or videos about the many products and services offered by the Crosby Group, you may contact Crosby Direct at 1-800-772-1500 and visit our website at www.thecrosbygroup.com for the latest updates on our products and services. Or you can email us at crosbygroup at thecrosbygroup.com.